Let's say that we have an atom that happens to be in its excited state, and nearby is a detector that can detect single photons. Later, the atom is found in the ground state, and the detector gives a click. Consider two explanations. First, the detector clicks because the atom jumps. Or second, the atom jumps because the detector clicks. We did an experiment that shows that the answer is less intuitive than you might think. Take a light bulb, for example. We might ask, when this emits light, does it emit a photon or a wave? Now imagine this is a fluorescent light bulb, where light is emitted with an electron bound in an atomic orbital transitions to a lower energy state. This process is called spontaneous emission, and it's actually responsible for most of the light we see from the sun. Spontaneous emission involves a transition from a higher energy level to a lower one, emitting a specific amount of energy. But is that a photon or a wave? Well, it depends on how you detect it. If the light is absorbed by a wall or your eye, the molecules in the wall absorb light in the form of individual quanta, photons. In addition, a photon detector absorbs a single photon, giving us a click, telling us that it has arrived. Let's use one of these detectors to see what a photon tells us about the atom that emitted it. Okay? We know the atom is initially in its excited state, and as long as we do not detect a photon, we know it remains in its excited state. And when we detect a photon, we know the atom has jumped to its ground state. This is what we call a quantum jump, an abrupt transition to the ground state. Repeating this experiment, the photons arrive at random times, and the average of many of these jumps reproduces the familiar exponential decay curve. Now the random arrival time of these different photons and corresponding jumps comes from the spontaneous nature of this decay. What about the wave nature of light? Well, waves can interfere. Two waves where the peaks and valleys align interfere constructively, creating a higher amplitude wave. Or if the peaks of one fill the valleys of the other, we have destructive interference. We built an experiment to study how detecting the wave nature of light might change the process of spontaneous emission, and it involves microscopic superconducting circuits cooled to temperatures just a hair's breadth above absolute zero. Just like natural atoms, these circuits have a higher energy state that can spontaneously decay to lower energy, emitting light. We used quantum interference to measure the wave nature of the emitted light, and the resulting interference is all noise. This is the ubiquitous and fundamental quantum noise, akin to the random arrival of our single photons in the previous experiment. It carries complementary information about the state of our superconducting circuit, how the probability of the circuit being in a higher energy or lower energy state evolves in time. And this noisy evolution exhibits peculiar features where the circuit can actually get more excited when it decays. This is very different than the quantum jump evolution we saw with single photons. So in one case, we have quantum jumps. In the other case, we have quantum diffusion, a very different type of dynamic for the quantum system. Now returning to our original question, where we have an atom in the excited state and a single photon detector. Now does the detector click because the atom jumps? Or does the atom jump because the detector clicks? Well, we've shown that the atom jumps because the detector clicks. And that is because if we instead detect the wave nature of light, we find that the evolution of the atomic state is very different. This is fundamentally due to the entanglement between the atom and its light. And this gives us ways to control the atom by the way that we look at the light.